I'm recording. Yeah. Okay. So we're recording, um, and uh, we have uh, stuff. Uh, so who would like to be the call driver? Okay, I'll be the call driver. Um, because uh, you know, there we go. I'm driving almost already. Uh, and who'd like to be the minutes keeper? Can't be the same as the call driver. This is why I volunteer for the call driver, so I don't have to take the blooming minutes. I, I, can, I, can, I can take, take the, the minutes, minutes again. <laughs> okay, Fabio, well done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and please fill in your name. Just to keep track of uh, how, many, how, many uh, how long the thing has been going or what we've been talking about. Uh, yes, yeah, so as you go down the agenda items or if there are announcements, if you look on the uh, the uh, meeting below it in the agenda items, you can see there's sub bullet points that actually explain what was discussed as we were discussing it. Okay. So, um, so there we go. Uh, everybody on the call is a familiar face. Let me just full screen on you. Oh, there we go. That's better. Um, and uh, so uh, welcome to the community call. It is the 16th of January, 2024. Gosh, 2024. Where's January gone as well? Um, there are no announcements to make, uh, but I have um, the. I'll go straight to the agenda items then. Um, so the first one is is from me, and that's just uh, the agenda item is next release question mark. Um, so uh, thoughts. Uh, we have stuff we could release. Um, I just want to get uh, a, an impression from folks in the call uh, whether we should or shouldn't, because making a release takes all of about five minutes. How do I raise my hand? Uh, well, there's this floppy thing on the end of your arm, and it goes up, <laughs> and we see it. It's all, yeah, that's the one, that's the one, that's the one. Okay, awesome. We're real old school um, here. Yeah, so uh, to me, there are at least, sorry about the noise, uh, there are at least um, a couple of issues that I would like to tackle before the release. There is this ongoing discussion uh, around the Dunder script or the current script or whatever that means. Um, and I would like that to be resolved because it's fairly easy, but there's no consensus. And the second one, um, I mean, me, me and Nicholas and probably Martin, who suggested that Dunder script, <laughs> agreed, but <laughs> there the, the, the were more people involved. So I would love to have either a thumb up, thumb down, or yeah. absolutely no, stuff like that. Yeah, check it out uh, on GitHub. The, the discussion's yeah. on GitHub, and, in case you're wondering. Yeah, the other one um, is about the PyTerminal. I have a quick demo to show after. The merge request is already up and green, and uh, but uh, I would like to discuss more in details after when it's okay. time to, to deal with that. Cool. So, uh, so when that terminal thing and the uh, and the Dunder script, our uh, current script thing is done, then we can do a release. So we're waiting on those two things. So cool. Um, maybe we should time box things and say if we've not heard by the end of Thursday, uh, we'll uh, and uh, about the Dunder script thing. Um, we uh, start making more noise and poking people or telling people we'll just do Dunder script because that's what you've implemented, isn't it? As the as the merge request. So. Um, okay, so that's in hand. So there hopefully will be a uh, a release this week. So that'll be 2024 1.2. Um, and then um, the next one is, uh, oh yeah, it's another one of mine, um, a report on the meeting that uh, <coughs> Antonio, Andrea, myself, Damien and Hood uh, had this morning about uh, Python FFI related things uh, i just wanted to give some verbal feedback and andrea and antonio please um uh, tell me if i've missed anything out but essentially uh three things have come out of this uh number one uh, the micropython ffi uh, was the first draft and is not complete um so damien now that um, anaconda will be supporting him uh, will be able to uh, 
make that have parity with the pyodide ones so that um, we'll be able to interact with more complicated JavaScript situations that require some of the stuff that he's not quite yet implemented. So that's just for him to go away, read the docs, implement the thing, what have you. Second thing, um, then thanks for Antonio who managed in... In, in, in the in the space of one sentence to both suggest something and volunteer for it. Um, so I'm very pleased about that. Uh, Antonio suggested that wouldn't it be good if we actually use PyScript as a way of creating a test suite or test harness that would allow MicroPython and uh, Pyodide to uh, exercise their FFI so that we're able to see that there is indeed parity and all the kind of like niggles and edge cases and things like that that, that may or may not uh, be uh, part of the FFI are, are suitably exercised. So we're running the same sort of test suite. It's just ones in MicroPython, ones in, in Pyodide. Um, so uh, Antonio uh, very kindly said he would put together a scaffolding for that and then people can start to fill out the tests and things like that. Um, so I'm assuming that will be um, uh, Hood and, and Damien and or any of us as well um, to make that happen. So that's the second thing. And the third thing, <laughs> hold on to your hats because it's a big rabbit hole. Honestly, I'm not sure it was a rabbit, more like a Tyrannosaurus Rex that we saw digging there. But anyway, it's a deep one. Um, so an event happens in the DOM and you want to attach a Python function to handle that event. So you might create something in Python, def, my handler, E for the, uh, for the argument, and then you do a bunch of stuff, okay? So uh, there are two ways currently of currently attaching um, uh, functions like that to events. First one is, say we have a, a reference to a, a button called button, and we might do button.onClick equals and then uh, the function. Um, that works in MicroPython, in the main thread, on the worker, okay? And it also works in Pyodide on the main thread and the worker. The second approach is to do button dot add event listener quotes click and then um, the function. That works in MicroPython on the main thread and in the worker. And it also works on Pyodide in the worker. Now, here's the kind of fly in the ointment or the bump in the road. And, and Jeff, I noticed that you've written a great blog post uh, describing just this very thing. Um, when you use uh, add event listener on the main thread and you pass in a Python function, currently Pyodide expects you to wrap that function in a create proxy uh, function. OK, and uh, we were exploring um, this kind of inconsistency that we have. Uh, here. It's not even consistent with itself. There are subtle reasons why that's the case, um, but I just wanted to let you know that there are kind of ongoing conversations about this. Um, I quite like Damien's suggestion, which is, well, if, we, if we're calling create proxy everywhere, uh, this was Andreas actually, if, we, if we're calling create proxy everywhere, why don't we just create proxy by default anyway? Um, there are subtle technical reasons why people may not want a proxy object uh, created then and they want to do something else in which case Damien suggested why don't we have an anti-proxy or a no proxy type function that gives that case okay so what we're doing is flipping the default behavior around um, just to let you know that these conversations are ongoing if you would like to uh, attend those calls please do let me know I'll, I'll, I'll invite you they are um, uh, at interesting times because we are in the most inconvenient time zones <laughs> for meetings. So they are around midnight West Coast time. So I'm assuming that's going to be early hours of the morning for anywhere east of that. Um, it's going to be early morning, 7 a.m. for UK time, 8 a.m. for the rest of the Eurozone and um, sort of early evening for Damien. So that's the best we can do. But uh, we actually had Hood, even though it was three o'clock in the morning for Hood, uh, turning up and taking part. It was lovely to see him. Fabio, I see you've got your hand raised. Sorry, just for, for clarity and also to add to the minutes, uh, you said that you are planning to invert no, we're not planning. Really I'm easy. saying, I'm saying, we have been discussing that as a possible solution. Oh, sorry, yes, uh, Daniel suggested that we would invert. Yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. But we uh, don't know quite yet what we're doing, 
And to be honest with you, the end of the meeting was basically, let's go away and think about this. I suggested that Antonio go skiing and Andrea do snowboarding and I go walk the dog or whatever. And we let that kind of bubble. And the next time we meet, which will be in a week's time, we'll have a better sort of understanding and thought things through and we can start to work out a consensus for a way to move forwards. So that's that's where we are. And I just wanted to highlight this conversation is happening. We're an open source yeah. project, even though this is actually three projects. There's PyDide, MicroPython and PyScript involved in this. Please turn up to those meetings. Just beware because of the strange time zones. It's a dodgy times for everybody. Um, but let me know. Hit me up. Sorry, but that conversion is to use create proxy or not to create not to, proxy. so not to create not proxy. To create. The proxying is done automatically for you, whereas currently oh. it isn't, and you have to wrap it in create proxy. But for those people who know what they're doing and don't want a proxy or be created, it should be wrapped in a kind of no proxy or a anti proxy thing, which was Damon's suggestion. Jeff. So just uh, just to, I, we don't need to go too deep into this, but just because I know these get recorded and pushed out, just to lend a little bit more um, detail to what's going on. Um, and of course, if Hood says anything that contradicts me, Hood's much deeper in the sauce than I am. Yeah. Um, what's happening is not that Pyodide isn't proxying things. What's happening is that Pyodide is actually doing memory management between JavaScript and Python. So when you call add event listener, and you give it a Python function, it says, great, I will I will create a proxy, attach a listener to it, um, and then add event listener terminates, so it no longer needs to hold a reference to that function, so that proxy is destroyed. And that's why you get that, you know, uh, like proxy, borrowed proxy was automatically destroyed error, that means yeah. nothing to anybody, yeah. because it created the proxy, and then it said, cool, I'm done with it, and it threw it away. Um, and all the create proxy does in Pyodide is, adds that proxy to literally a list on the JS side and holds reference to it so it can't get cleaned up. Yeah. So what's really happening, it's not that Pyodide, and I'm, this is, I know, we're deep in the weeds, it's not that Pyodide isn't doing something that MicroPython is, it's that Pyodide is actually cleaning up after itself, whereas MicroPython just holds a list of those references forever, right? But behavior-wise, that's quite convenient, right, for yeah. us as end users. Um, I also wanted to throw out there just for, and I see Andreas hand up, as well, I, I, I want to throw out there one alternate solution you can use if the add event listener um, syntax is useful to you. Uh, in Pyodide, there is a wrapper function, which is add underscore event underscore listener. And all that is, is a thin wrapper that says, take the function, create the proxy, call add event listener on the JavaScript side, and put the proxy in a list. And there's also a remove event listener, which is the inverse of that. So if you, everywhere you have dot JavaScript add event listener, if you use Pyodide's add event listener, this whole issue goes away. Now, that said, this is now more things that like users have to know that probably they shouldn't. So there's probably some cleverer way to do this. There's but inconsistency as well, isn't there, is the other thing. Yeah, yeah. So now, so this is, I mean, this is now more in the weeds than anyone really needs to know. But now this will be on the internet somewhere where I can link to it and say, here's this explanation of what's going on. Also, care about it uh, but there's also this fantastic blog post written by some guy called Jeff uh, that explains this in, in, in detail, too. Um, so, Andrea, you've got your hand up. Hopefully I'm muted. Um, this is as a summary, but also for Jeff. So it's not that MicroPython doesn't care or the Pyodide cares too much. <laughs> it's that Pyodide doesn't trust the life cycle of the, uh, not the life cycle, the, the, um, uh, the finalization register. So the garbage collector that runs in JavaScript, because that's true that it's true that the garbage collector there's no way to understand when it's going to run or when it's going to fail. This issue specifically is um, is broader because we have a when decorator. The when decorator, if it uses create proxy on MicroPython side, um, it's doing overwork for no reason. If it's, if it's actually using when decorator and on, on the pilot side, it must use create proxy when it's at event listener. More on that, the PyDide FFI add event, add underscore event underscore listener is not compatible with the DOM API. It, it misses the third argument that usually is the options where you can say once 
or more things that actually are being introduced in the DOM world. So uh, that's an incomplete answer. And also that's even more friction to me, personally speaking, <laughs> to users. You have to explain that, I, uh, that they are using a wrapper that is not really a wrapper of a native API, that is not really the native API <laughs> to do something that is otherwise simple. So when you're going to fall back to the Pyodide from Pyodide FFI wrappers import uh, add event listener, there's a lot of background that you need to know about that, which is hard, harder to explain than a JS node add event listener, because that's well documented in MDN. You expect that to work as MDN says, and that's don't field. Um, the wrapper in there is not fully implemented. He might have caveats and he doesn't understand handle events. So that works with callbacks <laughs> in Python, but it doesn't necessarily work with JS reference into the Python world. So it's a, it's a new world of um, explanation for our users when it comes to just adding an event listener. And so in that case, I, I, I think we should find the best middle ground that works for both MicroPython and Pyodite. And the best for our users is to actually don't care about this stuff because otherwise it's not simple anymore. It becomes very fairly complicated. But even with our when event, we need to be careful about when creative create proxy is needed, when it's not. Because in MicroPython currently it's not. I don't know if MicroPython is implementing the finalization registry, so I'm not sure that MicroPython is just not caring about memory consumption. Um, I need to re re read better internals. But in an ideal world, both Pyodide and MicroPython do care about memory consumption or memory in general because they have to. And, um, and they trust the finalization registry and I open an issue to the TC39 people uh, I don't know how that will go, but I've explained the issue and I said, hey, how about we find a way to at least hint uh, some finalization registry that uses a special mechanism to to be a bit more greedy because otherwise the, the, the browser says, like, I, I don't want to name a browser, but like there are some browsers that say, hey, you have 32 gigs of RAM. <laughs> how about we use all of that? Um, the browser says, hey, we can kick these more often, or at least for the, for the observed objects for that finalization registry, we can give you a way to hint that we should check those objects sooner than later. And I think that would work wonderfully um, for for our use case, for our specific use case, so, so um, but also other use case. And, uh, so, so, sorry for the- No, 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 no. This is all very good. Um, I mean, I don't care uh, is perhaps what most people think. It also worries me because it feels a little bit like the implementation details are creeping out it's into the public API idea. because now I need to go, well, there are proxies. What's going on with a proxy? And and uh, and then um, the, the, the final aspect of this for me personally is you go to MDN and it just says pass in a function. Uh, it doesn't say anything about whatever. So anyway, the, yeah. the important point, and I'm going to close this part of the, the meeting off in a second. The important point, because like I said, this isn't so much a rabbit hole as a Tyrannosaurus Rex hole. And if you get into it, it's going to bite you in the bum. Um, but the important point is, is that this conversation is ongoing. We have a meeting where we will talk about these sorts of deeply technical things. And if you're interested in hunting Tyrannosaurus Rexes, and we've now got two people with their hands up. Um, so the, the three people with their hands up. So you're going to have to be very, very quick. Um, then come along to those meetings. I think it was Andrea, then Antonio, and then Jeff. So Andrea first. Very, very quick. I'll be very quick. To me, the Python, the Pyodide FFI is entirely about implementation, implementation details. So there's a word in there that you need to understand and know what you're doing that it's not natural to, to even MicroPython has to implement the same FFI. It's, it's weird to me because I want just to write some code and I, that has to run. I don't want to diverge between FFI implementation, FFI. I don't probably want to even know what that FFI is useful for as a learner, as a newcomer. And uh, 
when yeah, when needed, I want to find the, the documentation and everything else and be sure that I'm doing the right thing. So to me, it's a bit upside down the way it's done right now. It's like just import Polydot FFI, and that's already hard to explain, harder to explain somehow. That, that's it for me. Okay, Antonio. Okay, uh, two things, very quickly. The first is that, yeah, uh, we, we should really try hard not to go into wishful thinking. I would like everything to work seamlessly and without problems. I don't think it's part of the reality. <laughs> I don't, I mean, yeah. I, 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 as far as my knowledge goes, it is impossible to make JavaScript and Python to communicate transparently, completely transparently. So what, I, I, I mean, something which works out of the box always in all cases, it's impossible and we will never get there. So yeah, we would like, but it's it's not possible. So we, we, we should acknowledge that there are limitations and there will always be. Absolutely. Second, and I think that it was like, we, we should also be careful as a community and be nice to Pyodite people. It's not our, it's not our decision yeah. how Pyodite behaves. Yeah. We, we, like, and, and I, even with my PyScript head on, I think that uh, what you are proposing uh, is wrong. Like uh, they, they create proxy automatic, blah, 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 will create more problems than it solves for PyScript users, for all the memory management problems. Mm. But apart from this, it's not our decision. If, if I die, they can listen to our complaint and then they will decide what to do. And if they decide that create proxy automatically is not what they want, then we should deal with it. Yeah. I, I just want to make it clear, I we are a respectful community, we play nice with each other and um, for, for me and I, I, I think I could speak for everybody here, it's not that we're telling Pyodide what to do, we're exercising our brains and thinking of ideas and yes, clearly... Sure. I, mean, I know, I know, I, know. Clearly, I just want to make sure but, that... But, you're, but, you are, you are, are, but this is why we are a, a conscientious yeah. community, is because Antonio, folks like you bring this up and we acknowledge it, which is what we're doing now, so thank you for, for doing that. I noticed there was Jeff, then there was Martin, and then there's Andrea for a second time. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're talking about finalising tables. I think we've gone wrong with our finalising table for this part of the discussion. But anyway, Jeff, very quickly... Very quickly, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna agree with both Andrea and Antonio, if I can, uh, which is I I think there is a world where and Antonio is is right we're like exposing and harmonizing all of the internal FFIs of our different systems is probably more than our users want to learn, and we have been a, a lot so far in uh, so far a lot of the Python API is just like take a JS reference to something and say from PyScript import this thing. And it behaves the way that PyScript says it does, and you don't need to care how it works under the hood, you you users, you. Um, but similarly, like the way that we can encourage power users, right, people who get a little bit deeper, is so far as like, oh, you do want to do manual proxy management? Well, go look at the PyScript source or come talk to us, and we'll show you what that feature is doing under the hood. So if you, it's using the Py.ffi, it's using the MicroPython FFI, uh, and maybe in different ways, right, depending on what they're doing. So I, I think there's value in us continuing to help PyDide and MicroPython know what their FFIs are, whether we make them be the same or not. But I think Antonio can be right too, that like there's probably a way for us as PyScript, the same way that PolyScript sits on top of multiple runtimes, we can probably sit on top of multiple FFIs and help harmonize them a little bit, which is my vision of, yeah, of yeah. how this could be really cool. Yeah, that makes um, sense. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Martin, and then Andrea. <clears throat> exactly what Jeff said, only I would have said it less eloquently. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Andrea. L last, I'm gonna put a you know big cross because you're the last person. So go for it. Very quick. Yeah. Uh, by no means, I wanted to be as respectful to the hood or either in general. It's just uh, the current. There are things that I can we can solve in in PyScript and things that we cannot. When it comes to cross browser, cross worker, sorry, cross worker, um, we have to do certain things, otherwise nothing works. But when it comes to main, we are a bit trapped with what we can do, and what we cannot, or what 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 is wise to do, and what isn't. So uh, I fully respect both PyDide and MicroPython people working on PyDide and MicroPython and MicroPython people things for, for our purpose. Um, and at the same time, um, I think 
some discussion must be raised, otherwise we, we yeah. cannot really move forward. So I don't, I don't really, it's not that I don't care, it's like, I don't, I don't care about the result. If the result is uh, anonymous, so every, unanimous, sorry, uh, every, everyone uh, understand what we're talking about and the way to move forward, that works for me. As long as it's consistent, as Nicolas said, and, and by no means I ever wanted to disrespect uh, or who no, no, I, I never wanted to say that someone in our respect. No, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We don't go in that because I think it's, we are like it's too easy to go in that in that direction. I, I couldn't agree more. I fully respect what they do because otherwise we wouldn't exist as a project. So yeah, 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 <laughs> that, yeah. That's exactly. The point. And, exactly. Uh, it's just building up and like, what can we fix? What can we do? What can we normalize? Like just Jeff suggested and. Uh, a lot of things, but not everything. So that that's my that's my point. Okay, so I I'm I'm gonna draw a line under that item. <laughs> You can imagine what the conversation was like this morning. Um, but uh, this is just what it is to be a software engineer. It's not just about technology and things. It's also about negotiating and trying to uh, listen to each other's points of view and playing devil's advocate. And it's not because we're trying to wind each other up, although sometimes that does happen. We need to acknowledge that as well because people get invested in their code. Um, but it, we're all trying to move the... Move the move, Boom. We're all trying to move the state of the world forwards, if you see what I mean. And we do that by collaborating and finding consensus. So that's what we're doing. We're doing the right thing. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yay. Well done, us. Uh, so the next one is uh, Andrea, Pi Terminal and Errors. Sounds like a menu item. I'd like a pint of Pi Terminal, please. With some errors on the side. <laughs> Floor's yours, matey. Is it about me? Sorry, I lost the audio for Okay, Pi ter Terminal and Errors is the next item. Oh, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, it's just coming through now. Yeah, perfect. Can you see this code? Yes, we can. So, nothing relevant in here, actually, except the, the this part. So we had an issue um, about the terminal not showing errors, and um, the current the current state is that on the main terminals are the Pi terminal is showing errors as expected. Um, so errors actually just go piped into the the terminal logic, so you see the error on the terminal. But when it comes to um, worker was not such feedback and then we had another issue so you see the feedback is only on the on the dev tool this not, is what josh wanted feedback. isn't it this is what josh wanted probably yes, yes. but not necessarily because the story josh all is uh, is uh, a bit more complex mm. um but right now it was about the terminal which makes perfect sense so this was the, the the case, and then Nicolas came <laughs> uh, came to me and told me, "Hey, how about terminal actually works the same in uh, um, both main and worker?" And it's true that the the logic was split. So before I was doing the set std out, set std out, which is the the proper internal way to tell the interpreter, pilot in this case, how to behave with the is ATTI and with buffers and all this kind of stuff. And before it was like on the worker, it was like this and on the um, on the red on, on the main thread, it was just an if IO ju just this part. And this part is actually what I had to add back because otherwise I couldn't see the error anymore. So there is actually um merge request that brings the this thing back. And this thing back is telling the, um, the interpreter how to use input output. And I've learned before and today one more time that STD out and IO STD out are not the same thing. Same goes for SDDR, STD in, at least in, in, in Pyodide. So I have to tell Pyodide that the, the function to invoke when something goes wrong, it has to pass through the IO that I've 
register at the very beginning when I bootstrap PyDad or MicroPython, I have this uh, um, field where I can say how the I.O. should behave and I can overwrite this thing. But actually that's in PyDad, that's completely different when I do these. These are completely different things. So when I do this, now I am still in the worker case, I believe, yes. And so now when, when I do this, I see the error back to the terminal. So that's the merge request is actually, if you look at the, <laughs> at the stats, it's like four lines of code changes. But to me, I would like really to understand how to provide the best way for, our, for, for eventually for ourselves or PolyScript or PyScript users to provide their own STD out, STD out and STD in. Because what I've done so far is to provide a way to override callbacks and theoretically the interpreter should just pass through those callbacks. But that, that's not the case clearly. And so, yeah, that's it. That's my demo is just, I fixed something that is important, but I still not fully understand how it works, which is required to fully fix the Josh um, issue. And I hope I will do that by tomorrow, but um, don't hold your breath because it's, <laughs> it's uh, you have to, I have to dig into um, PolyScript, the uh, way the interpreter is bootstrapped and understand if there's any difference between these or anything else and intercept stuff. Uh, at runtime, time, um, but yeah, at least the Python story after these merge requests get merged, which is here, and um, at least that should be good to go. And I hope this goes in the next release, release because, like I say, the, the, the changes are literally um, these lines and these lines and not much else. Um, so that's it. Awesome. Um, so, whoops, uh, so, um, I would, my, my advice would be, uh, speak to Josh as well, and Fabio, sorry, you've got your hand up. Uh, because, uh, uh I was trying to write things and watch the screen, so I didn't pay enough attention. Is, so is that part where you added the IO, um, um, dot stdr uh, and the part with the interrupter the, the code that you have is it the same in the worker and the main or there are several sub, 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 i don't know how to say that word uh, are differences <laughs> between the two on that yeah, last yeah. part if you know what i mean yeah so the reason why i'm asking is if if both of the the, the, the both code are the same um i was wondering if creating just like a internal method to do this thing so then we can just change it on one place so then someone else won't come over and say oh i'm going to comment this out ah everything is broken again <laughs> yeah so it looks the same in the surface but it's not uh, <laughs> the, reason being, the reason being with the workers we evaluate the whole code block in the worker the whole code block evaluated in the worker cannot have an outer scope function. So you just evaluate that function and nothing else. So there are comments on the on the code that says, okay, this is this looks the same, but it's not. And the other, the other uh, that's for the main, and the other one for the worker is that this looks the same, but it's not. And the, the, the main difference is that on the main, we are using readline module from XM to just read and write stuff. On the worker, we have to pass through the sync, which is an architecture behind the scene that synchronizes stuff. Sync write and sync read, which is completely different. So most of the functionality looks the same, and I agree with you. Usually I, I try to... Um, Dry, don't repeat yourself. The same except one reference. Yeah. I just say, am I stupid? Why am I duplicating code? So in this specific use case, the code has to be duplicated, but that's because with workers, you have to pass the whole thing and you cannot, and this is actually described in our documentation. So you cannot have an auto reference because 
it's a string. So you, you, you pass and evaluate a string down the worker. It cannot have can be the JavaScript on the main out of the box because it has to be evaluated, it has to do the proxy dance and the uh, worker atomics and blah blah blah. Um, and so it's it's hard. It, I know it's ugly, and uh, the only way to fix this is to create a um, pre parser or something that understands where the stuff goes and actually transform that output into duplicated code for either worker or main, which is very complicated but not impossible and hopefully one day we will have that too. I think that was a great explanation, even because, like I said, I, was, I wasn't I was paying fully attention, so I apologize for that. But even if someone, because this is being recorded, right, someone asks, oh, that seems similar, why is not the same thing? Now you explain it perfectly, so I yeah. appreciate that. Great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, a good question as well. I mean, it's important to ask these sorts of things. Because uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. usually people go dry, you know, don't repeat yourself, but there are always educated cases. Martin. Uh, no. <laughs> you're, you're on mute, mate. You are mute. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, saw, I saw the same thing and I was back to ask the same question and Fabio jumped in there and it was like um and then I, and so are you saying that oh, I understand that you can't take that bit of code and put it in a method, but it could it if it's within the same function body, could you pull it outside of the if statements? Would that still have the same restrictions? But if you're a function uh, you, 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 you say for the worker, I want this function to run. That function becomes a string. That right. function, the same string has nothing but a call to another function, wherever you define that. Right. That other function doesn't exist in the, in the other world. So you have to bring whatever logic you have. Okay, this is an edge case, to be honest. What I've shown, <laughs> probably I shouldn't have done that, but what I've shown is, is, is an edge case. So we really have duplicated code because in this case, there are a lot of dependencies accordingly to the interpreter that you receive from the function, the IO reference that you receive from the function, and this can be really simplified. So th these are two different words, and this is all internal code. It's, um, it's documented, but not super simple to explain. I totally agree with that. But we don't really have any, any other way to, to do that. So if you have a function that points to another function, that function will be stringified somehow and brought to the new world. And if anything in that stringified function has a reference to, that, to another script that is not known in the new world, I will fail. That, right. That's it. And that's because we are writing code on the main thread. We are bringing that code to the worker. We have to serialize if, it, basically. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's basically it. If we had a way to write code directly for the worker only, that would be easier to, to reason about. But the worker doesn't have an interpreter, a PyScript tag, or a script type I, or and it has not done, it has not reason to bootstrap. So the way we bootstrap the worker is by saying, okay, this node with this content, which is text, we also serialize, um, is asking to do this, 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 and that, and you have these methods to call, and all the methods must be serialized too. And so here, worker, do your magic. And that, that's how it works right now. Um, but usually, our users should never care about this, uh, plugins, writers, and especially third plugins that third party plugins that we are writing are <clears throat> for a reason. That, I guess that's the reason we are bringing these plugins inside the PyScript um, core offer because um, these are overly complicated for, for, for an average user to, to actually write. And I'm not proud of this, but that's actually a technical limitation of the architecture behind because we have everything defined on main and it has to run in a worker somehow and right. that has to be realized as a string and strings don't have references and uh, stuff <laughs> yes. out of the box so yeah. that's my, my best answer and i'm not even sure it's a good one but uh, <laughs> that's how it is right now and uh, no, 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 i'm not sure that it's, it's yeah. better than no answer 
and, and, and so, so just, just, just for, for my understanding, understanding so basically, basically though, the, the string that gets serialized will be the entire function with the with, with the if statements, statements in it about if I'm work it out if or other thing, but the whole and it's just that one block gets ex executed because you're in the work, right? The switch controls which bit gets okay, but it's but it serializes the whole thing. The whole thing, as as you see, it is exactly what what gets executed, and that's the same with I don't know what you see is exactly what gets ex executed, and so yeah, it's a similar approach, but it's when you write plugins, is uh, it might be harder to explain why is that, and so you have you might have if a plugin works similarly on both the main and the worker. Is, but it needs the sync uh, utility in the worker. So the other thing, the, the, the pipe terminal has this huge difference. It's, a, it's one line of code, but it's huge. On the main thread, you cannot interact with it. Right. On the worker, you can interact with it, and it pauses the worker without blocking anything until you write something, you press enter, and that's the end of your input. On the main thread, you can't do that because the moment you wait for an input, either you type and keep waiting, I don't know, it's blocking. So it's just blocking. So even the cursor wouldn't blink. So right. that, that's the huge difference. And that's the reason the PyTerminal is probably the most complex plugin we have so far. But uh, it needs this kind of code duplication. I wrote in the code, that's the reason it's duplicated. Uh, of course, with a quick demo, um, it, it feels old, awkward, and I agree with all of you. Yeah. <laughs> but that's needed, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is another another Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex hole. Not a rabbit hole, it's a T-Rex hole. Okay, so uh, if everybody's happy with that, the next item is, can we update the calendar link? I can answer that. You mean the calendar link in the shared calendar that is the PyScript thing? Uh, 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 fa I mean, fa uh, Fabio the Elder can, <laughs> Nicholas Tolovy, yeah, I, I can't. So just, just please politely remind Fabio uh, to do it. Um, I will. Yeah. Uh, Fabio, I Fabio the Younger. Um, we probably know this, but on the events, you can grab a link for the specific call. Uh, and I think if people are not on the server, they get invited to the server as well. And I think... Uh, they get subscribed to that event yeah. through the link. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think that would be cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, uh, uh, Fabio's in a, in an Anaconda meeting at the moment, which is why he's not here. Um, but, you know, when you see him, um, buy him a virtual beer and go, hey, you know that calendar thing? And, uh, you know, let's be honest here, Fabio has a bazillion things on his to-do list. I mean, the guy is a kind of a machine when it comes to getting stuff done. And we, you know, the, the universe, the PyScript universe would be an infinitely poorer place without Fabio. So um, just be patient as, as, as the universe catches up with Fabio or Fabio catches up with the universe, whichever way around it is. So um, that's 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 basically it. There are no more agenda items. Um, so I'm uh, I'm aware of the time. We're, we're close to the end of the meeting. Um, so is there anything else that we need to talk about or shall we just... Uh, click the stop recording button and um and end the meeting okay i'm just going to stop the recording then stop